Good morning and welcome to Northley United Church for our virtual worship. I'm so glad you decided to join us this morning and uh, we begin our worship as Jonathan leads us in How Firm a Foundation. Jonathan. So it's Mother's Day. I want to extend a warm, warm hug and thank you to all the mothers this morning. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for caring for us, for nurturing us. Thank you for all the jobs you signed up for and didn't know about as moms. I wish you the, a day filled with blessings and joys and I hope you have a chance to connect with your families and uh, just, a, just a warm, wonderful congratulations on motherhood. We also have something else to celebrate today. It is our third anniversary. Northley celebrates three years as a merged congregation with the former Bedford Park United Church. And so, boy, we've come a long way through a lot of interesting challenges, not the least of which is this current pandemic. So it's time to celebrate. I hope that you'll find a piece of cake somewhere in your day and, uh, and spend some time reflecting on our time together. When we do return, we shall have a celebration for sure. In the meantime, happy anniversary. I hope you received your card in the mail. Tricia and I put together a special little remembrance for this anniversary and uh, it includes a bookmark. If you didn't receive that, it may be that we have an incorrect address uh, or maybe we don't even have your address. So if you'd like to get your special anniversary card and bookmark, please be in touch with Tricia through uh, the church office, Tricia at northlyunited.ca and she will make sure that you get one sent out to you. Also, I just refer you to our website and our weekly news bites for all the activities and special programs online that we are offering during this time. So, let us continue with our worship, with our call to rest in the Spirit of Christ. God is our hiding place, says the psalmist, a place of refuge, of retreat from the storms of life, from all the things that are bothering us, we are all hiding from something or looking for something that remains hidden to us. Perhaps this is the day we'll find it. Let us take this time to be present and see. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pray. You have always been our help in ages past, O God, a steadying hand when we trembled, a solid rock when the waters rose about us. We praise you for the gift of your love and for the many times you have come to our aid when we did not even realize we were in danger. You have saved us to this moment and brought us together in this amazing way to be with you. Share your mercies with a strong sense of your holy presence, that we may leave here today in the assurance that you have once more touched our lives and made us whole. Through Jesus Christ, amen. I invite you to join in singing, Behold, Behold, I Make All Things New. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Before we begin our reading this morning, I'd like to invite you to just take a moment and stop the video if you haven't already prepared and find a Bible. Either that or open up Google and type in the reading for the day, John 14 verses 1 to 14, and print it off. I'm going to ask you to work with me as we read through the text today. So take a moment now, stop the video, and get yourself prepared. Now, it doesn't matter what version that you uh, were able to find. Uh, my version may not match your version, but that doesn't matter. As long as we all are looking at the same passage, then we're good to go. So together we, we open our hearts to the wisdom of the Scripture, the living Word of God for us today seeking in it the truth or guidance or assurance that we are looking for. We trust that the Holy Spirit is present with us in our reading, in our time of reflection. And for that, thanks be to God. So as I read the scripture this morning, I'm going to invite you to just notice which words sort of jump off the page at you, either in a way that is uh, reassuring, affirming, um, heartening, or perhaps challenging. Maybe they might trigger something in you, a sense of resistance or, or uh, some negative feeling. Just notice, in either case, which words are drawing your attention in this reading this morning. The reading begins with the title, Jesus Comforts His Disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father, living in me, who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and that Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. 
you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. So what did you notice as you heard that reading this morning? What words or phrases or images brought you comfort or maybe agitated you? I'll leave you to ponder and I'll point out some highlights that I noted as I was reading the scripture. I heard first and foremost, do not let your hearts be troubled. I also heard, trust in God. I noted Jesus say that there will be a place for us, that we will know Jesus by his works. We will know that the Father lives in him through his works. We heard him say that the disciples would do greater and finally, we heard him say, just ask. There are many perspectives that we bring to the reading. Every time we read scripture, we're reading it from the place where we are. The experiences that we've had, the current circumstances of our lives, the things that we have learned, the people we've encountered. So, Today's reading will be unique to now, to the present. And I wonder what perspective you brought to today's reading. Perhaps you heard these words as the disciples did, still not fully embracing Christ as the divine, the divine revelation of God. Perhaps you are still unsure, you are still uncertain and not convinced. Perhaps you are looking for something more concrete, something more clear and less, less ambiguous. Or maybe you're looking from the perspective of Good Friday, filled with despair, that your faith in Christ perhaps has been devastated by circumstances in life, by loss, by the pandemic. Perhaps you are looking or hearing this text from the perspective of the resurrection and that you are filled with awe having seen so many signs of the risen Christ in this time, so many wonders of the spirit of love and compassion that have risen up in the face of this pandemic. Perhaps you are drawn by the resurrection to hear the reassurance of Christ that there will be a place for you. Indeed, we are still in the season of Easter. This is the season of Easter. We're invited to consider all the ways that we see the risen Christ among us and around us. The way Christ, Christ was raised above and beyond pain and suffering, humiliation, degradation, oppression, suppression, injustice. When I landed on the last phrase, just ask, it brought to mind um, a reading that I've seen often come through Facebook and various other places called Everything I Need.
and it sounds like this. I asked for strength, and God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom, and God gave me problems to solve. I asked for prosperity, and God gave me brawn and brains to work. I asked for courage, and God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for patience, and God placed me in situations where I was forced to wait. I asked for love, and God gave me troubled people to help. I asked for favors, and God gave me opportunities. I received nothing I wanted. I received everything I needed. My prayers have all been answered. Now, part of me really likes this particular poem, this writing. But I have a little trouble with the theology of it. Let me say that I'm not really convinced that God gives us difficulties to make us strong or gives us problems to solve. I think all these things are just normal circumstances of being alive. Life is not easy. I like to say sometimes, none of us gets out of it alive. The truth is, life is filled with challenges and obstacles and pain and suffering and all things difficult. But what Christ teaches us, and perhaps more so from a Pentecostal perspective, is that the spirit of wisdom and patience and courage and prosperity and love and all of those things are part of our humanity. They're inherently part of who we are as made in the image of God. We have those capacities. They are innate to us. And I think they're in the, the wisdom of the text today is the invitation to believe and trust that that spirit already is there. If you are in a position of doubt or a place of doubt, perhaps now is the time to spend some reflection and contemplation and, and ask to be able to see what you cannot see in yourself. Sometimes all you need to do is ask. Then again, sometimes what you need to do is get clear on the question. What is it that you're actually asking for? Because perhaps the ask is the wrong ask. So today, perhaps the invitation is for us to spend some time in stillness and quiet, be present with the challenges that we are facing within ourselves, within our lives, to ask for the Spirit of Christ to reveal to us that which we most need within us and trust that it will be revealed. As Jesus said, just ask. Amen. Yeah.
How shall we respond to the generosity of the Spirit, to the love of God, to the teachings of Christ? In our reading today, we heard about the revelation of Christ's divinity being evident in his works, by his actions. And so, as a community of faith, we, we offer ourselves in any number of ways to serve the world. It's part of our mission. And so I want to honor today the many ways that we give of ourselves, the many ways that we live out the Spirit of Christ in the world, whether it be through our financial donations to the church or to making food for the youth without shelter. Perhaps it's in calling people who are homebound or simply calling members of the congregation to check in and see how they're doing. Maybe it's time spent when there is no pandemic, volunteering at various places. I see many signs and wonders of the awesome Spirit of Christ among us every day. And so we offer all these gifts in love, for the God who loves us, for the Christ who gave his life for us, and for the ongoing work of the Spirit in the world. Amen. Let us pray. O Holy One, creator of life, you have blessed us with a beautiful world open skies and flowing waters, trees of many shapes and sizes and colors, plants, flowers, vegetables, creatures of all kinds, such beauty, Your imagination is limitless. Your gifts are infinite. You have given us the joy of humanity across the globe. You have given us community. You have given us family and friends. You have given us our church. You have given us Christ who calls us into the world to serve, 
to be more than we can imagine that we could be, not just individually, but together. Today we ask to remember that we are able, that we have power, that we can change the world or at least make a difference. We ask for your wisdom as we navigate this pandemic and the eventual re-entry coming together again. We ask you to give us signs and direction and how we can help others and support. We pray for those who are challenged, struggling and suffering and in pain. Be with them, comfort them. And may we all know that no matter what happens, that we are never alone, that you are always with us. And now, O oh God, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we end this time together, I invite you to remember that the Spirit is with you. It lives in you. That you too are a divine revelation, filled with the capacity for love, creativity, imagination, joy, patience. And until we meet again, virtually, may God be with you. May you know that you walk with Christ and may the Spirit bring you many blessings. Amen. Oh.